know, the boss of Netflix recently announced that over here in the United Kingdom, Britain, us people here couldn't get enough of the royal scandal that was Harry and Meghan. In fact, he went on to say that we were the major subscribers download of, of course, the docuseries that some people say shocked the monarchy. I don't know about you, I thought it was a bit lukewarm myself with so many potholes in it. And of course, now since the screening of that, we've found out, have we not, that Prince Harry certainly couldn't remember certain things. His visa's in uproar and he couldn't really remember whether he'd said certain things to, of course, his ghostwriter while putting together his book for Penguin Random House, of which, of course, he was paid a lot of money. But as you can imagine, Ted, the boss of Netflix, realises the power of the British monarchy. And he realises that, obviously, people are interested whether it's true or not. You see, The Crown was very successful to start with, written by Peter Morgan, but then it became stupid, didn't it? A bit like a soap opera. And people really thought, no, that didn't happen. And as we saw, there were ghosts of Princess Diana and all sorts of stuff and nonsense. Of course, certain people will believe it if they don't know their royal history, and that's their prerogative. But now it looks like, even after all of this, Netflix are not clearly giving up on the royal family shenanigans just yet. Let me explain. It's lovely to see you here in the very heart of London at Scotland Yard today. Yes, busy day here, let me tell you. <laughs> Can't tell you why I'm here, but you know, <laughs> always interesting when you go into Scotland Yard, you know. I don't know about you, I know we showed the old Scotland Yard the other day, and I just think that I had more magic. Can you imagine going down that drive, particularly if you're a criminal, and knowing you might not be coming back out of that tunnel they took you down a secret passage? Hopefully I'll be coming out when I've had this meeting. If you don't see from me again, just send letters, care of Scotland Yard, Whitehall, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Back as ever though to your role story of the day. Now fascinating this really because Peter Morgan as I say creator writer of The Crown and you know a soul opera in itself. The recent uh, thing on Netflix we told you about wasn't a success scoop. Uh, based of course on the producer Sam McAllister's shenanigans trying to put together the Newsnight interview with of course the Duke of York uh, Prince Andrew. And again as I said you know ridiculous in many respects because people know the story a little bit bored and you could see the poetic license that they'd attached to that story. Absolutely. But now Peter Morgan apparently will be driven back to Netflix with the lure of a hefty check on the basis of doing a couple of one-off specials about guess what? more royal drama. One in particular he wants to focus on the story of the Duchess of Windsor. That's right, the infamous American who apparently stole the king and broke the nation's heart. Now let me tell you what's going to be coming out in the next few days. And remember you heard it here first. Apparently the <laughs> team out at Netflix think they've found the perfect person to take on the role of Wallace Simpson. You've guessed it, that's right, the former Suits actress Meghan Markle. Well, she dressed like her, didn't she, when she was sat down for the interview with Oprah Winfrey? Oh yes, she did. And more importantly, when you think about it, it would make perfect sense, the ideal casting. Now, they are old work from, of course, Meghan and Harry. Could they, in fact, put some thumbscrews on that in suggesting that maybe she becomes an advisor on the show, maybe makes a cameo, or indeed takes the leading role. This was made into a series way back over here in the 1970s and was very successful. But of course now updating it with the usual soapbox tricks that Mr Morgan is looking at, well, this could make it very successful once again for Netflix. The other option is he wants to look at the early life of Queen Mary, a lady that we told you about was very influential in the early life of our wonderful monarch Queen Elizabeth II. This is a developing story, this is something that Netflix would like. And given the fact that they're owed quite a bit of money and in return would like something back, and Meghan and Harry certainly need something to jolt their popularity back, would Meghan dare step in front of the Netflix cameras to portray a woman that was, for a while at least, loathed around the world for ruining the British monarchy? And indeed, where would she get her inspiration from? Truly, this is a developing story. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.